good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome back to the second session of this uh, of the fourth day. So today, Arijit will be talking to us. He'll be talking about higher order topologies in quantum spin models. Arijit Haldar is from SNO Center, and uh, his research interests are mainly uh, involving topologies. Yes, one of them. Yes. Off with a disclaimer. The disclaimer is that it's not going to be a talk on uh, uh, computational methods, neither it's going to be a tutorial, but it will be a talk on emergent quantum matter. In uh, particular, I'm going to talk about some uh, new developments in the field of topology, which is actually, you know, what we have said, higher order topology. And I will see this how higher order topology can be realized in uh, quantum spin models. I will basically talk about various proposals and various ideas out there that have been shown. You know, can show higher order topology. It's interesting. All right. So let me jump into the outline for the talk. The talk will go as follows. So first, I will try to make a give a brief uh, pedagogical introduction to what is higher order topology, and I will do this starting from um, conventional first order topological ideas, which you probably have seen in this workshop. And this will be done first for electrons. And sorry, what happened there? Some talk. This will be done first for electrons. And after that, I'll show you how this higher order topology can be realized in systems beyond electrons in alternate platforms, which will naturally bring us to the motivation for the next part of the talk, in which I will uh, uh, show you some of the work that I have been doing, in which we construct models for higher order topology in, uh, on spin diver lattices. So, uh, so the spin diver lattice, spin divers are another name for quantum paradigm. So, essentially, I will be showing you how you can get higher order topology in quantum spin paradigms. And finally, I will talk about various theoretical results uh, to detect higher topology, like phase diagrams, sorry, phase diagrams, symmetry, and topological in phase. All right. So, without time, let's jump into the talk. Okay. So, so now we'll try to kind of understand or get an idea of what, <coughs> yeah, uh, what higher topology is. But to do that, we we'll first try to understand historically. What is conventional topology, which I am calling now as first order? It will become clear why we call conventional topological physics as a first order as we progress. All right. So, so in my experience, I have found this model to be really helpful when you want to understand topology very quickly. So, this is a model of one D topology of electrons, with the famous model named after its uh, you know, founder, Su Shrikar and Diver, or the model that is now being referred to as the SSH model. It's a relatively old model. But nonetheless, it has a lot of physics, which is nice to see uh, if you want to get a feel of the problem. Okay. So the model is as follows. So, so the model is just one dimensional model where these black uh, sites are places where electrons can live in. And uh, these black sites are connected uh, to its adjacent sites either by a black bond or a purple bond. Now, the unit cell, if you, oh, I, I hope you everybody know what a unit cell is of this model, I have uh, marked in this red box. Now, within the unit cell, electrons can tunnel or hop from one black side to the other with a hopping amplitude T1. And between two unit cells, electrons can hop with a hopping amplitude T. So the black bonds gives you, uh, is denoted, the hopping amplitude on the black bonds is denoted as T1, and the hopping amplitude on the purple bonds is denoted as T2. Now, if you notice, I have made the thickness of the uh, this bond a bit different. Namely, I have made the uh, thickness of the black bond to be thicker than the purple bond. This is to indicate that the hopping amplitude T1 on the black bond is greater than T2. All right. Now you can consider another variation of this model, which is where T1 has been made less than T2. In that case, I am denoting it as T1, the bond, the width of the bond being lesser than the width of the purple bond, which has a hopping amplitude T2. Now the interesting thing about this model, since it's a lattice model, you will naturally try to attack this problem with band theory. Now, if you do your band theory correctly, you will find. That this is how the uh, bands look like. So it's a 1D model, so you have only 1k, one momentum, and you see that there are two bands which are exactly symmetrical. 
and they are separated by a gap which is our back gap. If you look at the spectrum of the T1 greater than T2 model and the T1 less than T2 model, both have the same band structure. That means band theory is not able to tell apart the difference between these two models. So how do you tell apart these two models? So it turns out the answer would uh, rise in topology. And if you want to explicitly show that, it's better to, so here I have considered the models to be like infinitely extended in all direct in, in, in both plus x and minus x direction, both cases. But to show this topology explicitly, you need to work with, one way to show this topology is to, if you work with this finite uh, versions of these models, which you can do simply by cutting these two models at some distance apart, right? And then try to calculate the energy uh, spectrum for these models. Of course, since you have cut these models now, right? You will not have translation symmetry anymore, so you cannot talk in terms of bands, but you can still talk in terms of energy level. So you simply find the Hamiltonian of this problem, you diagonalize, right? And you see how the energy levels are distributed according to the ascending index. For example, it will typically look like this. So this is for the first model where T1 is greater than T2. So you will see what I have done here is I have calculated the eigenvalues for this finite chain and arranged those eigenvalues in order of their index in ascending order. And in that, what you will find that you find that there are two kinds of manifolds here, right? And these two manifolds are separated by a gap. So this gap is precisely this one. But it has to be drawn this way because you do not have translation symmetry anymore. And Block moment is not a well defined quantum number. So I am using the index of the energy values. <laughs> okay. So for the T1 greater than T2 model, you see that there is, uh, you know, there is only this gap and no, no other features. But surprisingly, if you plot the same energy spectrum for the other model, T1 less than T2, you see everything is same. There are these bands, there is also a gap, but inside the gap, right at zero energy, there are two states. Two states which are exactly at zero energy. So these are called mid gaps. And this is the consequence of topology. Okay. Now you would like to see what are the, what is the nature of these mid gap states. So like how do they look like? So to, to do that, you simply plot your so you have solved for the eigen spectrum. So you have also have the eigen value corresponding to this mid gap states, right? So using sort of the eigen vector corresponding to this mid gap state. Using that eigen vector, you can plot out your wave function, the mod square of your wave function of that eigen vector on top of your lattice size. And when you do that, you find that this one of these mid gap states. The, the, the probability amplitude is maximized at the corner or at the boundary of your model. So this uh, having a boundary mode is a typical uh, you know, quality of topological system. So this boundary mode is what to be localized at the corner. On top of that, if you add some disorder, you know, you add some disorder potential to every side, you will see that this mode will still remain local. It will not go up. So this is immunity towards disorder. So using this picture, you can now kind of give a working definition for topological state. Okay. Can I get that out? Yeah. Yeah, if you, other places will also get out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so you can now kind of give a working definition to kind of keep in your mind for topological phases as gap phases hosting protected boundary states. So this protected boundary states is the key word. And um, so when I say topological phases here, I mean this is the definition for first order topological phase. Correct? Okay. So there are other you know more exact definitions, but for this talk, this will do. Oh. Uh, excuse me, yes, please. Uh, I think you can only have this order that respects chiral symmetry, right? Yes, you are well, uh, you are you are right. Uh, <laughs> even if you have disorder which doesn't respect chiral symmetry, on the average, if it respects chiral symmetry, you can still have it local. You can do it. It's a very simple calculation. Just try to we just put disorder which doesn't respect chiral symmetry. Even then, on the average, if chiral symmetry is respected, you still have it should be localized. So basically, till that disorder is closing this gap, you are fine. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's uh, go to the next one. So so just keep try to keep this definition in mind. Of course, this is not the full definition. There are you know. Other types of topology can call weak topological insulators so where you wouldn't have protected stuff and all. But anyways, for this talk, this is this is going to serve us as fine. All right. So, so now you can ask, right? Okay, we understood that there will be like this, uh, um, you know, a con, you know, a localized boundary mode and so on and so forth, right? But what is the physical manifestation of this idea, particularly for this uh, model that we were discussing, the SSH model, right? So if that SSH model is topological, how does it physically manifest, right? 
So it turns out we will need to understand this physical manifestation of this model in order to get to higher order topology. Okay, so what is this physical understanding? So now again, consider the topological SSH chain, which has this edge mode. And instead of plotting the uh, probability density squared, right, the mod amplitude squared, if you plot the charge density, so this is an electron system, so you can plot the charge density of your ground state for this model. And your ground state, in this case, I'm talking about when the system is half filled. So half filled means when the uh, level is, is at e equal to zero from this picture. So when your system is half filled and you then plot the charge density distribution of this finite SSH chain, you will see at one end of the chain, you will have more charge density and the, on the other, you will have less charge density. This is electron charge density by the way, right? So what does it mean? This means that there is a charge separation in your finite chain, which implies that there is a dipole mode. So a topological SSH chain is actually a kind of a model of polarized into it. Yeah, and this idea between topology, not right, rather topology, but this uh, you know topol the idea of topology to gauge fields and all was first kind of pioneered, and, and in connection to polarized polarization, etc., was first kind of pioneered by Vanderbilt, Smith, and Western, right? In fact, so much so that this 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 polarization can actually be identified as a topological invariant. This is the you know how the topological invariant for this system looks like the formula for it. You must have already seen this formula in your previous workshop. So these are just the uh, block wave functions <coughs> whose expected and you are calculating the expectation of the gradient operator in momentum space and integrated over the blue host. And you can also show from arguments of topology that this, this polarization will be quantized to zero or half. Right? So it turns out that this idea is the key to get to higher order box. Okay. So now so so you made the connection that uh, the topological SSA chain leads to a dipole moment or a polarized infinite. Now the obvious question. Can we get higher moments from the box? For example, what about a quadrupolar input? Yes, please. Uh, so, is the polarization associated, I mean, the polarization data only in the polarization and the edges or the entire? Entire. Uh, entire. Entire. entire, 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 entire yes. Okay. So, yes. Because if it were at the edges, right? If I didn't have edge, you wouldn't have found the <laughs> polarization. But you can still find the polarization even though periodic boundary times. So, it has to be to the entire material. So okay, so then we may only ask the question, right? Oh, because we got polarized into it. How can you get higher moments of you know electric then charge distribution for the polarized? This precise question leads you in, into the path of higher order polarity. It turns out the answer is yes. And this was done very recently, well, recently compared to this one in 2017 by Benel Kaza, and Hughes, and it got published in science. So the, the first model that they propose that can have this quadrupolar insulator is a stack version of the SSH model, where you can see both in X and Y direction, the SSH model has been stacked in a very particular manner, right? So I will explain what these dash lines mean later on in the later slide, but you can see, you can appreciate that each each of these lines is a, basically a, a SSH, 1D SSH model in hiding, right? And again, if you play the same game like you did here, if you plot the charge density or the, uh, or the eigen spectrum and so on and so forth, you will find now your protected states are not on the boundary. But at the corners, they will be localized at the corners. So that's why we will call them as corner states or corner modes. And again, now if you plot the charge density distribution, you will see that it looks like this. It's plus in the opposite corners and minus in the other corners. Plus means higher charge density and minus means lower charge density. So this is exactly what you would expect from a quadruple uh, configuration. Right? So you see this natural uh, question of, you know, naturally asking this question, how do you generalize the ideas to quadruple? Gave you this, uh, this kind of uh, new class of metric, you know, models where you can start and define, uh, start to define some other forms of topology. All right. So then you can ask, you know, take the question one step further. What about octopolar insulator? Yes, you can do the same thing, stacking the z direction. Right. And then you will see that you know the corner modes are localized at the four corners of your cube. And uh, sorry, and the charge distribution will be you know the, the, all the blue corners will be plus all the uh, red corners will be minus, and you will see it is only has an octopus. Okay, so you can see that there is a hierarchy that we can build. Right, you can build a kind of hierarchy, kind of polarization, four to four octopus. You can even go higher, but those higher objects may not live in our physical three dimension. They can live in higher dimension. Right. Anyways, okay. Now to really connect this idea to higher order topology, I would insist you to take an alternate viewpoint to all of this. Right. So for this first model, which was in one week, you saw that the uh, localized more appeared on its boundary, 
or on the d minus one dimensional boundary. So the boundary was zero dimensional here, and the model is d dimension one dimensional. So it, the bound, the localized modes appeared on the d minus one dimensional boundary. So keep this one in mind. Similarly, if you make the same argument here, so this again, if these are corners localized at the corners, and this material is two dimensional, the, the, the localized mode is occurring on the d minus two dimensional boundary. And for the third one is d minus three dimensional boundary because it's a cube, and again you are looking for a corner for three dimensions. So I can name them as first order because it's appearing on the d minus one dimensional, and then d minus two is a second order, and d minus three third order. So I will name all these types of phases as higher order topological phases. So you, now you see what I meant by a natural generalization of this idea leading to higher order topology. Right? So this is a very quick and dirty way of seeing higher order topology. Right? Okay. So let, let us now discuss even more types of higher order products. Okay, so let me be with it. So you already saw the quadrupolar insulator, which is a second order topological system in two dimensions. You also saw the octopolar insulator, which is a third order topological system in three dimensions. But then you ask, can I have a second order topology in three dimensions? Yes, they will look like this. So you will, so for example, you have two. This is the came out in the same paper, both both models. First is of what's called a chiral hydro topological state. So the idea here is the, the localized states or the protected states live on the edges of the cube. So if you have a cube which is three-dimensional, the edge is a one-dimensional object. So it's two minus uh, three minus two. So it's a second order object. So that you, you can you can have one kind where the uh, where you have only one edge, one uh, one kind of uh, this kind of a uh, uh, state, delocalized state along the edge, uh, and you can also have a third second kind where you have two delocalized uh, states on the edge. So, and these two delocalized states do not hybridize. The reason is because each of these directions, right, the directions where they're carrying the momentum have a different spin. For example, the blue has a, we can think of it as the blue has a plus um, direction, plus red direction spin lock to it, and the red has a minus red direction spin lock. So this uh, spin direction locking, spin momentum locking, lets two uh, allows two edges, uh, two states to live on the same edge. So we can also see that there, you know, this hierarchy is increasing. The number of uh, types of higher topological phases is increasing. Right? Okay. So then, you know, using all these ideas, we can now give another working definition for a general nth order uh, topological insulator. So any gap phase in D living in D dimensions. With protected modes on D minus n dimensional boundary will be called as an nth higher order topological phase. All right. So just keep this definition in mind. This is one of the definitions we'll be using throughout our talk. All right. Okay. So just to set set up things for the rest of the talk, I will call this first two class of models, which are obtained from stacking SSH models, as the BBH type models. Uh, because of course, because it's named after three people, the variables are going to be used. And these other two models, uh, we will not be concentrating on these two, but rather on the first two. Right? So the rest of the talk, we'll be talking about specific properties of these two models, the BBH line. All right. So since we'll be you know, using, looking to detail of these models, right? so, let, we'll want, so what we would try to do is come up with even more definitions for higher higher topological case. Okay. So another equivalent definition is, you can uh, give sort of a recursive definition for hybrid topological phase, which is that an nth order hybrid topological insulator will have n minus 1th order topological phase on the boundary. What does it mean? So consider again the two dimensional BBS model, which showed quadruple moment. If I look at the effective edge theory on the top, I will find that that, uh, that effective theory resembles that of a conventional or first order topological. Similarly, I also find that the effective theory on the right edge, if you had a right edge, will also show first order topology. And you can also see diagrammatically that these two theories are inter intersect. What does mean? What that means is that you will have a shared corner mode, a, sh a shared corner localized mode, which is shared by both the top and right edge topological phase. So these two definitions are kind of equivalent. So you will, will be using any you know any version of this definition for to prove that do we have hydro topological phases or not. Later on. Okay. Another uh, nice property about uh, the BBH class of models is that this higher topology is protected by what is called as non commuting mirror symmetry. So let me explain how. So 
So, uh, so, right, so, good. so I'm now going to explain what are these dashed ones. So these dashed ones uh, represents five flux insertion in each of these square flags. It simply means I will change the sign of popping on these dash ones to be negative of those on these solid ones. So what this will do is basically insert a pi plus to every square flag. And this pi plus introduces the new types of these non-commuting mirror symmetries into your model. And it turns out for the BBH class of models that these non-commuting mirror symmetries actually enables the higher topological case to show up. For example, if these dash lines were actually not dashed but solid lines, like plus hopping, same sign as these, you wouldn't have got a higher topological case. Correct. Okay. So what are these uh, non-commuting mirror symmetries? So one is this this reflection about the y-axis, which is which you denote as mx because x axis changes under reflection, where one the, the, the wave function amplitude at one gets interchanged with the negative of the wave function amplitude at side three, and so on and so forth, whereas two and four doesn't get this sign change. Right? And the other is the my uh, reflection, which about the x-axis, where uh, you know one and four interchanges and two and three interchanges changes without any additional sign. Now, the non commuting you have to take my word for it. If you write this symmetry, so this is the representation of the symmetries in real space. But when you write these symmetries in momentum space, you will see that the, the matrices that we know mx and my will turn out to be non commuting. Okay. So, this non commuting nature is very important to achieve higher topology in this VBH class of models. So, just try to keep these kind of definitions in mind because we use them to construct higher topological phases in alternate platforms. Okay, the last property that we want to check is the existence of hydro topological invariant. And for this BBH class of models, it, it turns out to be something called one year sector polarization. So I'll talk about this in a bit more detail in another slide. So we need to check for all these properties and, and all these definitions and see if a phase satisfies these definitions. We will say that it's a hydro topological phase. Even that phase, even if that phase uh, occurs in a non electronic system. So, so since we started talking about non-electronic systems, so it's natural to now talk about hydro topology in alternate platforms. Okay, so the, the phenomenon of hydro topology is very universal. You do not really need to stick to electrons to see. For example, this is a very nice paper in Nature very recently. So where they constructed hydro topology out of phonons. So this is a very classical system, nothing to do with quantum, right? You have these uh, uh, you know, acoustic resonators that they could connect in a fashion which mimics the BBH model. And they could find these localized, you know, acoustic modes at the corners. And you know, it's a very simple experiment, very simple idea, but it's got a nature to work. So yeah, so it's quite interesting. Okay. Then it doesn't stop there. You can have hydro topology in electrical systems. This is also, I think, a nature physics paper. So yeah, so one of the authors is actually the person who also came up with the chiral and um, helical hydro topology. So you can actually have a network of inductors and capacitors again to mimic this BBH model. And get you know the, maybe these voltages which stay localized at the corner, high voltages which stay localized at the corner, like they're so It's very universal. The idea is very universal. People have found things in photons as well, photonic systems, and etc. Et so this kind of naturally gives you a motivation. What about hydro topology in spin systems? Can you realize hydro topology using spin uh, Hamiltonian systems? So this is going to be the subject matter of the rest of the talk. Okay, but. One key importance about all these things over here, from the fermionic version that we saw earlier, is that all of these will be bosonic modes. Right? All of these localized modes are bosonic, they are not electronic modes. So, so for the electrons, you have this uh, hydro topology manifest as you know polarization or quadrupole moment or octopole moment. Because of uh, Fermi, you know, Pauli exclusion principle, you could have that. But for bosonic modes, that's not true because Pauli exclusion principle doesn't apply, and you can't have a ground state where everything below the Fermi level. There is no Fermi level to begin with. So for bosonic modes, we have to come up with other you know, signatures. So these signatures are exactly the ones that I showed earlier. So one is protected corner modes, immune to disorder. And a recursive definition should apply. What that means is that I should be able to theoretically show or analytically prove that the edge theories are n minus 1 nth order hydro topological theory. Right? And of course, if you can find out the hydro topological invariant, that's another smoking gun evidence that you have hydro topology. All right. Okay. So we'll be again using these ideas to construct our models for spin systems. All right. Okay. So this brings us to uh, quantum spin systems, right? 
So you must have already kind of seen in the in these workshops or you know learned in your textbook that you know when there is strong interactions between electrons, right? Your electron degrees of freedom has two electron has two degrees of freedom, spin and charge, right? So when you have strong repulsion, for example, in the Hubbard model, if you think it that way, right, between uh, electrons on one side, the electron uh, you know, the electron motion, right? The center of mass motion of the electrons will cease to operate, they will be localized. But the spins are free to interact with each other, right? With other electron spins. And then can, this can effectively give rise to spin only Hamiltonians, right? Which can be modeled by a spin spin exchange interactions of Heisenberg type. It will be typically of the form Si dot Lj, where Ij are sites where electrons are sitting. Or in more general, it can be a tensor. J can be this exchange interaction, uh, J can be actually a tensor, which, uh, you know, uh, which talks to the alpha and the beta component of your spin operation. Right. Okay, and where do you kind of, you know, what kind of phases? So suppose you have such kind of spin systems. What are the typical kind of phases that you can encounter in such spin uh, Hamiltonian uh, systems described by spin Hamiltonian? So one is a very common phase of quantum magnets, which are phases of this uh, spin system with magnetically ordered charge. What that means is that, sorry, uh, I'll come to that. The other is quantum paramagnets, where phases, where the ground state doesn't have a magnetic magnetic order. So what do I mean by magnetic order is that you know, uh, your ground state spin configuration, so every side will have a chosen preferred direction where the spin will align. For example, here I am showing the anti ferromagnetic configuration and the expectation value of the spin, if you go from side to side, will be strictly non zero. Right? You can even, and these states necessarily break uh, time reversal symmetry. Whenever you have this spin speaking up expectation, you need to break time reversal symmetry. And you may or may not break uh, lattice uh, uh, translation or rotation, whatever. And another nice feature about this magnetically ordered ground state is that you can have non trivial spin textures, textures in the form of what are called as kernions. So, kernions are like vortices of spins, you know, uh, uh, which are bigger than the unit cell of your original lattice. So these are quite interesting features because they, they, itself, they itself can show non trivial topology or, or what is called as real space. Okay. On the other hand, the way to think about quantum paramagnets or when quantum paramagnets can come up is that when you have a ground state whose, uh, you know, every adjacent spin have kind of formed a singlet with its neighbor. So, for example, if you have this lattice denoted by this orange dot and this uh, this dimers that are denoted with this ovals, right? So, each oval is a spin singlet. So, since each oval is a spin singlet, their net spin is zero, right? And hence, your entire ground state has zero spin, so it's a quantum paramagnet. Right. So the distinguishing feature of quantum paramagnets, as opposed to quantum magnets, is that quantum paramagnets preserve time reversal symmetry, but also may break lattice uh, translation symmetry. Okay. So this one breaks time reversal symmetry, and paramagnets preserve time reversal symmetry because next spin is zero, here next spin is not. Right. So there is actually even more phases that you can get, especially a notable phase, which is a spin liquid phase. Which I'm not going to discuss. Okay, so so let's uh, try to see what are the kind of work that have been already done in higher topology in quantum magnets, right? So quantum magnets again, you remember, are um, uh, systems with magnetically ordered ground states where each side has picked up a preferred uh, uh, direction for its spin to align along, right? So in these systems, there are something called magnets. I, I guess you have already seen from the customer talk. What are magnets? But I'll read it at once more. Right. So, so if, 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 if you have to, you can imagine that if each spin has aligned up, right? If you now go to one of these spins, it can precess about its aligned direction, right? And when it's all these precessions from all these spins, right, uh, coherently try to talk to each other, you form a big collective excitation called a magnet. Now, these magnets will show dispersion relations exactly like electrons on a lattice. And it turns out you can use these magnets to form your higher topological phases. For example, this is a very nice proposal from uh, Hirosawa and uh, uh, Daniel Loss, uh, Daniel Loss's group actually. So they are all in Daniel Loss's group, and which came it came out very recently in 2020. So the idea is, if you start with a you know certain class of materials, you will have these uh, uh, ground states who have this fermion texture, which arranges in the form of this lattice. So each is a fermion. So if you go around one fermion, the spins will rotate by some. Uh, integral of two pi, right? So using this fermion lattice, you can actually produce the correct con combination conditions for a BBH model. 
namely all these mirror symmetries and all these things. And uh, having done so, the resulting magnon excitations will get localized in the corners. So you will form a hydrotopological phase of magnons instead of electrons. So it doesn't stop here. There is another uh, proposal by uh, uh, Parkley and Kim, uh, in which you do not even need the fermion texture to get uh, you know, this kind of higher topological <coughs> right? And of course, you also have proposals to get hinge magnets. Or if you remember these states I showed you, right? You have a cube, and the uh, localized states live on your edges. You can even have we even have proposals for getting hinge magnets, which is second order topology in three dimensions. Again, this is again the same group by Daniel Loss and Trino Hall's group. So there have been quite a not, not too many, but three examples of higher topology in uh, quantum magnets, right? Which are magnetically ordered. So of, of course, so, you know, now the question is that is there any proposal for higher topology in quantum parameters? It turns out there hasn't been one. Uh, our talk is the first proposal. Our uh, my next topic of this talk will be the first proposal in this regard. Right. All right. So, so this basically brings us to the motivation of the talk, of the rest of the talk, is can we get higher topology in quantum paramagnets, which are spin systems without magnetically ordered knots? And in particular, can we engineer models theoretically? Of course, I'm not an experimentalist. I have to do things theoretically. Can we engineer models of spin paramagnets with excited states showing higher topology? So remember, this magnets are excited states of quantum magnets. The same question we can ask for quantum uh, spin paramagnets. Can we form higher topology of the excited states of quantum spin paramagnets? So, to do that, we need to start modeling these quantum paramagnets a bit more carefully or a bit more mathematically. So, this, as I already said, these quantum paramagnets can occur in, in, in systems where your electron electron repulsion is very strong, which naturally get few things like not insulate. Okay. So, so, to get this kind of uh, substitute for magnons or electrons to show higher topology in quantum paramagnets, we look. We need to look at the basic building block of my quantum spin paramagnet, which is a spin diamond or a spin singlet. So, a spin singlet, if you recall from your uh, you know uh, school day, you know you know you know bachelor's or master's days, can be modeled by this exchange Hamiltonian H equals to JD S one dot S two, and the spectrum of this uh, simple model is extremely simple. You have a ground state which is a singlet, which we all I already discussed in the previous slide, and then you have a set of excited states, degenerate excited states called triplets. The spin configurations up, 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 down, uh, uh, sorry, uh, up, up, down, down, up, down, plus down, right? So when we kind of have, so, so, okay, so now we will try to kind of use these triplets, these excited triplets as particles using which we want to construct our higher topological phase. So in fact, if you connect these dimers, this kind of H, J, D, S1 dot H2 object with additional exchange interactions J and J plus plus less than J, D, and suppose, you excite a triplet in one of these dimers. This triplet, because of the J interaction, will hop from one dimer to another, just like an electron. And just like an electron, it will have its own bands and dispersions. So we want to use this object, this triplet, to get higher topology in quantum parameters. All right. But of course, let me define the basic difference between this triplet. So this, uh, this, uh, this, so this dispersing triplets I call as triplet. Sorry, I used a name earlier. Uh, so okay, let me now formally define. So this. Dispersing triplets, alpha triplets, and they are fundamentally different from what we saw in electrons in that they are bosons, and these triplets will come in three flavors because it, it got generated from a uh, three fold degenerate uh, state. Right? Okay, so let's now kind of uh, look at our plan to get a higher topology using these triplets. So we'll use the same trick as we did for electrons. That we will construct a second order topological BBH type model by stacking first order or conventional one topological models of triplets. Right? So, to do so, we will look at spin dimer ladders okay, with dimer dimer interactions, which is described by this tensor, like we are saying, this exchange tensor, which is 3 by 3, and which typically has this form. This exchange tensor has many symmetries and all. I'm not going to discuss those, but just remember it's a 3 by 3 matrix. Whose various uh, entries I will use appropriately to get two models which show higher, should we show conventional topology. Right. All right. So the first model, which is done with only the diagonal elements of my J tensor, which I will call as okay, model one in this in, for this slide, it looks something like this. You have a bunch of these singlets or dimers connected by alternating 
uh, Heisenberg inter uh, interaction of alternating strains of J1, J2. So the dash line is J1 and the solid line is J2. And when J1 is J less than J2, is, this is the region we are interested in. The second model utilizes the off diagonal components of your uh, J tensor, right? So these off diagonal uh, components are often found when you have spin orbit coupling in your model. And these spin orbit coupling terms manifest as this DM interaction terms in your Hamiltonian of the form D dot SI cross LJ, where D is a vector parameterizing this interaction, right? So these are the two models that we want to use to construct um, examples of first order topology or conventional topology and then use them to get higher order topology. Okay, so now you have these two models and you can do the analysis using flip flop and you find both have exactly the same spectrum as the SSH model with two bands and in the, and the band gap and inside the band gap you have two states which are at the middle of the gap, so mid gap state. But the crucial difference now is that these are trip counts, not metrics. So you have found out how to do, how to get first order topology, conventional topology using uh, uh, spin diagrams. All right. So now the game is very simple. We start stacking this spin diagram ladders. Okay. If I stack the model one, which is purely made out of diagonal terms of J interaction, you get a model something like this. Minimal model that is required to get higher order topology is something like this. So you see that I have stacked these uh, spin diamond ladders alternatively. Here, the dash lines have um, anti ferromagnetic exchange interaction, that is minus uh, the sign of the exchange interaction for the solid lines. And you come up with a model which has four diamond spin units. And for the second model, which used spin, spin orbit interactions, we can come up with a stacked model which looks like this. And this has two diamond spin units. And I'll call the first model as the triplon BBH model because it looks exactly like the BBH model for electrons, but with triplons or spin diamonds. And the second, which is completely new, right? I'll call it the T soft model because it stands for triplon spin orbit coupled model. Okay. Again, you now solve the do the triplon analysis, solve for the energies. You see that this is the energy spectrum, looks how this uh, this is how the energy spectrum looks like. And inside the energy spectrum, we see a gap. And inside the gap, if I zoom in, I see four mid gap states, right? Similarly here, I see four gap states. So we are on the, seems to be the fact that we are on the right track. So we don't want to now conclusively prove that these four gap states are corner states or corner modes so that we know we have higher topology. We can do that very easily by plotting the uh, triplon density distribution on the lattice. So the moment you do that, you see that, you know, the black is higher. So I, get, I have this triplet density to be high at the corners. Same with this other one. So indeed, these are, these are looking like corner modes. That we are after, right? So, so the conclusion of this takeaway message is that corner mode energy from higher order topology are indeed possible in spin diamonds, and we call these corner modes as hot triplons, higher order topological triplons. Okay, so we have coined this term for this. All right. Okay, so any questions so far? Because now I'm going to go. Yes. Uh, do you have any additional symmetry coming from the uh, three flavors? Yes, uh, from the three flavors. Yeah, yeah, so the yeah, XYZ, yeah. 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 the triplet yeah, yeah. So, could, could you go back to the previous phase? So my question is, even in the single component case, you have two mid-gap states, right? Yeah. But uh, how about the triplet case? Because you have three flavors, right? Yes, you're right. So if you have no magnetic field, right, this is actually uh, six of them. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what I expected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I'm just you know, not mentioning those subtle details here. Truly to speak, if you want to get two, you just put a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. The other two will gap out and you will be left with those. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes, okay. got it. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Once, once you have this XYZ component non zero, uh, then your total spin is not preserved, right? No, which these components? Yeah. Because you can have only if it is XYZ component. So it's Okay. Triplet is no more a concept once you have. No, no, but like, no, no, you're right. So, so again, see the triplet description is a perturbative description, just like Magnus. You have higher terms in Magnus, right? When you look at Magnus during the whole scheme, you know, Magnus is the first order approximation to your Hamiltonian. Right? Of course, Magnus, if you uh, keep the other terms, Magnus number is con not conserved as well. Then. Same thing here. So you have a certain kind of transformation, which is like the whole thing of but for triplets. And in the first order, you will see triplet number is conserved. 
But in the moment you put higher order, you will see secret number is not going to stay constant. The reason we say that those higher order doesn't matter is because of you know this gap here. If this gap is large, those higher order terms which do not conserve triplet number will have lesser contribution. So this is the inverse gap is the perturbative parent. Yeah. I think his question is uh, yeah. if you have XYZ analysis would be then you know those I mean triplet degeneracy will be lived. That's your that's also point, possible. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's also possible. That's also possible. You can you can by you know putting extra anisotropy, you can hit the degeneracy. But what I'm trying to say is that I think you talked about triplet being thumbs up, not a good description. You said that. Okay. But even if you have anisotropic triplets, the next XLP state will still be triplet. They may not be DNA, but they will still be true. Yes, it's just in the non standard body, it's not defined in the set or index, it may be defined. But if you have a complete isotopic model, oh, that's what they say. That's what they say. Uh, Single deck can always be fine. It's a ground state. So, again, in the perturbative sense, right? So, anyway, so the so what I'm trying to say is that your ground state, if the ground state can be well approximated, by a product state of singlets. Get me. So every singlet, you take a product of all these singlets, that's your ground state. Predominant part of the ground state, then all these analysis you want. It may not be exactly, of course, the singlet is not an exact description, it's an exact example. Right? But if the majority of your ground state is function, looks like a product over singlet space, all these analysis will go. Okay, stop. So, okay. You this. This is so short back. Okay. Okay. We 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 can. Okay. So any other question? No, I guess. Not. Okay. Can I move on? Okay. All right. Ah. So now I have shown you the first piece of evidence of hybrid topology. We now need to go through that entire checklist I showed you earlier, right? All the other definitions, like edge theory, shared order mode, to conclusively prove this. These two models are showing higher of the model. So that is what I'm going to do in the next few slides. Right? So first I'll start doing that using H theory. I'll, I'll motivate that your H theory is indeed topological, of first order topology. So to do that, you, you plot out your bands for your trip form, and then you expand uh, around special momentum points where the bands are, you know, have the uh, where the band basically the band gap occurs, right? Which I denote as K0. And if you expand your full trip form Hamiltonian. To first order about this K0, you will come up with a with an effective Hamiltonian where you can identify a parameter which looks like a mass term. And this mass term's sign can control whether that effective Hamiltonian is topological or not. Okay. And we can use this mass term and by hand add a modulation to this mass term. For example, along x direction, if the mass term changes sign like this, this is a very quick and dirty way of introducing an edge. In your analytic problem. So if I do that with this effective Hamiltonian over here, what I will find is that I will find solutions which are localized along this edge. So the solutions decay into the bulk in this direction, but delocalized along this. Right? And you will see that in the space of solutions, the effective Hamiltonian, which I write as H, H right, means the effective Hamiltonian on the right edge only depends on KY. Because it's a you know it's a it states that delocalized along KY and that Hamiltonian looks exactly the same as that of a topological 1D model. In fact, it will look exactly the same as that of the SSH model, right? Of, and, and, and that means that it has first order topology. So using this prescription, you will you are able to find the Hamiltonian which shows first order topology for the edge theory of the right edge. Now you can do one more thing. You can identify again a mass like parameter which I call M tilde in this new Hamiltonian and modulate that along the y direction, which gives you a top edge. And you will be able to find the intersection of top and right edge, which is, which is a corner. And in that corner, you will be able to find that there is a mode living there. There is a state living there, which I call psi corner, right going to top. What that means is that the first I modulate, uh, first I found the effective theory on the right edge, and then I introduced the corner. By modulating the uh, the the my m tilde y term, so first get to right and then go to the top corner. So that's how I written it: right, top, side corner. Now you can reverse this process. 
you can first modulate the y direction mass and get the top edge effective theory first. Again, if you do that, you will find that it's again SF first order topological theory and is modulated by another set of mass term m tilde y m tilde x. And then you can introduce your corner again like this, and you will find another localized state at the corner, psi corner top, psi corner top going to right because I first found the effective theory for top edge, then introduce the right edge to get the corner. So the question is, are these two equal? If they are equal, they have higher topology. In our models, I have checked this one, right? And just take a so this is a very subtle argument. Just take a time, some time to appreciate that. So imagine if this was not a shared. So this 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 is like the shared corner mode, and we have another uh, you know uh, another item from the checklist of higher topology to hold. So uh, just appreciate this point for a while. If these were not shared corner, that means one of the theories, either on the top edge, on the right, or on the right edge, is not topology, is not showing first order topology, right? So you can see it like this. Suppose the H right wasn't first order topology. So once you found the H right Hamiltonian, and then you modulated the MY, this corner state would not exist. It would have been zero. And in the other way around, the top edge topological, you would have found a corner state which is bounded. And then this equality wouldn't have pulled. Right? So this is a very subtle way of you know. Uh, seeing that whether the corner mode is shared. So in both these models, we found that these corner modes are shared, and these are shared to form All right. Okay. So next one. So we I talked about this mirror symmetry in the BBS model. So these symmetries also exist for a triple BBS model. And they look something like this. The first is uh, reflection about the y axis in it. Under this, the spins from side two get mapped to side four and side and and vice versa for side four, side four gets mapped to side four. Two. But the interesting symmetry is the other one. Where you have sorry, there is a typo here. It should be MY. I'm sorry, just a moment here. M1. Oh, this is correct. Sorry, sorry, my bad. So this is MX about the Y axis. And for the other spins, so this was for sorry, just give me a moment. Let's see you make it. So under this symmetry uh, mirror, the spin on side two gets mapped to the spin on side four. The signs are needed to account for your correct spin commutations, right? The other symmetry, the, not the other symmetry, the other uh, the operation of this MX on spins three and one is not that trivial. So if you if you see if I apply MX on uh, spin on side three, it will map to uh, you know a spin on side one, but this. These two are not not, uh, not the symmetry of a model. Instead, you need to adjust and you need to add another piece of symmetry uh, information, which is a partial two-fold rotation <coughs> about the z-axis for three and one. So this combined symmetry C2 tilde z times mx is a symmetry of our model. And the other symmetry is the usual NY symmetry. And what you will see is that if I write the representations of the symmetry for triplons, I will come up with these set of uh, Pauli matrices. Tensor product of these three Pauli matrices, uh, sigma, eta three, and tau zero, and for my also sigma one, eta one, tau zero, and you can quickly check, you know, even visual that they anti commute because eta three and eta one are your anti commute. Right? So we also have similar anti commuting mirror symmetries for the triplon model, but they have to be augmented by these kind of operations. Okay. So another uh, point in our checklist is done. Okay. So non computing or whatever. <coughs> Okay. okay, so now let's talk about various phases that you obtain by tuning parameters in our model. Okay, so let's consider the TGBH and the triplon DBH model. So the parameters for these models are the exchange interaction strength along the x and the y direction, which are written as J1x, which are the green interaction strength, and J1y, which are these you know dashed gray ones. So if you modulate those things in that plane, you find that when both J1x and J1y is less than a certain critical value, 0 0.2, you have higher topological phase. Which shows corner modes, but but all the other three quarters do not show corner modes. But we need to we will we'll talk about these other three quarters quarters further. But for now, this is the typical case type for this model, right? For the TSOC model or the triplon spin orbit coupled model, you have again two set of parameters that you can tune. One is J1, like this J1. Another is an external Z1 field that you can apply. Okay, so if you do so and you plot it in the H J J1 plane. You see the the case is a bit more interesting. So when again when J1 is less than 0.2 and H1 
h is less than a you know certain value depending on j1 you again get higher topological phases and you get a corner a trip loss and etc and when you when j1 is greater than 0 0.2 you don't have any corner modes but interesting in this case when h is greater than this line over here you get a gapless bulk so you do not have any corner mode because your system is no longer gapped so you cannot have mid gap states so these two are very distinct phase diagrams, but nonetheless, the universal part, the higher topological part, it seems to be the same for both. Okay. So I think you know the details are given in this paper. We can talk about it if you have any questions. But you know, keep in mind this is roughly how the phase diagram looks. The main thing to take away here is how do we kind of understand these other parts of the phase diagram as well? So it will turn out we will need to figure out the topological invariant for this system in that case. Okay. Yeah, please. These parameters should be weak enough so that uh, yes. they don't mm -hmm. affect the uh, yeah. dimer ground state. Right? Precisely. Thank you. So J1A and J1I, all these things, JD, the dimer, the, the thing electric plate manifold gap, yeah, that is the largest scale. Okay. okay. So you Thank can you. see it's 0.4, right? Not one. One would be you know J J1A equal to J2. Yeah. Yes, all right. So okay. So now we want to kind of understand what are these other parts of the phase diagram, to do so, we need to look at uh, topological invariants for hybrid topological phase, okay, which gets us to this. Okay, so this is a bit technical slide, but yeah, I'll try to, I'll try my best, but let's see how it goes. Okay, so the invariant for, so the general problem of finding the invariant for hybrid topological phases is still not solved. In this, okay, it's still not solved, right? But are we going with one hour or one hour? Okay, okay. Okay, the general problem is not solved, but for the BBH class of models, we people have identified uh, embedding, which is called the one year sector polarization, and this can be constructed via the use of something called Wilson loop operator. So I'm going to basically run through the algorithm. You may not understand all parts of it, we can discuss because we are also pressed for time. Right. So to kind of find this invariant, what you have to do, you have to start with a discretized zero zone, kx ky with nx n y point, and then you take a for every k point. At the base momentum point, you can define a string of operator multiplication of fkx, fk plus delta x, so on and so forth. Uh, and you basically uh, keep on multiplying till you traverse your below zone once and come back to the same point here. Okay, so this Wilson loop operator I'll call as WXK. Right? And what are these f objects? So these f objects are itself matrices. So they are matrices whose uh, elements are expectation values between your block wave functions, right, at k and k plus delta k. And since the block wave function is also a band index, so the dimension of this fxk matrix is same as the number of bands. So number of bands by number of bands is the dimension of your fxk matrix. And you basically multiply the string of these band by band matrices to construct wx strip, right? And the sigma over here is, it, it, it looks like one minus one. So this sigma is specific for bosonic system. For electronic system, the sigma is one. So this is the recipe for constructing WSK. You can construct another loop there in the y direction. Right? So we are going to use WYX and WXK to define our topological invariant. So the next step in the algorithm is to map WX and YK to a sort of Hamiltonian, which is called the one-year Hamiltonian. Why is called the one-year Hamiltonian? It, it actually has connections with one-year functions. We can discuss later. So the mapping is something like this. The exponentiation of your one-year Hamiltonian it's e, e, e x p 2 pi i h alpha w is, should actually be equated to w alpha k. So basically, roughly taking the log of w x k and w y k, you can arrive at h x w or h y w. So this Hamiltonian has very nice properties. If you plot the eigen values of this h alpha w, uh, they will also form bands. And these two bands will have a band gap. And since they have a band gap, these bands, the eigen states of this h alpha w, can carry their own topological invariant, or in this case, that topological invariant with polarization. So because you are doing a two-step approach, right? First you are finding the Wilson loop, then you are defining a Hamiltonian, and then you are finding the polarization of that effective Hamiltonian. It's called uh, nested Wilson loop approach, or also called one year effective polarization. So using this polarization, right? So there will be two, two polarizations, Py and Px. Py corresponding to, you know, Hxy and Px, corresponding to h, y, w, right? So you can define all the phases that you saw earlier in the earlier slide using the super of p, x, p, y, which I collectively will denote as the voltage, right? 
And what, what you can show is this the value of Pxd by will only change across the higher topological phase transition. Now, the important thing here, as I'll show again here, so when this higher topological phase transition occurs, the bulk band gap necessarily need not close. So that's an unique uh, uh, property of higher topological phases. For conventional topological phases, the topology needs to change. The bulk band gap has to close. For higher topological phases, it's not required. However, the, the invariant that I just defined here, these will change. So with that, if I mark all these four quadrants, you will see the higher topological phase has both Px squared to be half, the upper one has Px to be half, Py to be zero, the lower one, this one has zero comma half, and zero, zero, respectively. So you have kind of an understanding of all the four sorts, right? Now you can do the same thing here in the soft model. And you see that these two are half half and zero half. Here I cannot no longer mark this because here the bulk has closed, the bulk band gap has closed. These things can only be defined when you have a bulk band gap. So in this case, I can only define the bottom. Okay. All right. So again, so details are there in this paper, we can discuss, but you know, so overall, I, I hope I'm able to show you that there is some sort of an invariant that you can use to understand these parts of the case diagram. Okay, so I think I'm done most of it, you know, overall, but I'll just kind of leave you with, um, you know, what are the attempts? So these are all these things I've been, you know, done theoretically. So we need to see that, you know, how, you know, how far experiments have come along. It turns out, you know, higher topology, seeing higher topology in um, trip downs is quite hard. Nobody has attempted it. In fact, seeing uh, first order topology is tricky on trip down is also very hard. There are, these are some papers. For example, this famous compound of function copper bore the people have argued that this the trip lawns of this function copper bore can show higher order topology in the form of thermal hall effect. But nobody has able to measure the thermal hall effect in trip lawns, not in magnons, by the way, in trip lawns, right? And uh, the only evidence that they gave is that this uh, experimentally observed trip lawn bands look very similar to the ones theoretically calculated. And since these theoretically calculated bands also show topology, these experimental systems should, should in fact show topology, but we cannot measure it. So this is the best evidence that we have. Okay. There are some others as well. There is also you know, a stack version of the Tripton matrix model, but this stacking is not done in the right way. It's not done with the anti-commuting mirror symmetries kept in mind. So they got normal first order topology, but not higher order topology. And for that, again, the evidence was there was no direct measurement of the corner board. The evidence was that the bands, the theoretical bands, matched by experimental. Hence, topology should be there. So it's a very indirect evidence. So things are not have you know, experimental techniques are not reached that point. But this theoretical idea shown in the previous slide of directly seeing the corner modes, right? Yeah. So it's it, it's so experiments have to catch up there. Okay. So I think uh, so I think I have given an idea of you know the experimental uh, side of these things. Okay. So let me just quickly summarize and then we can end. All right. So we I hope we kind of you know we started with understanding what hydro topologies and we did it by stacking conventional first order topological models and from that we saw how we can define hydro topology in various ways we discussed various realizations of uh, our pro and proposals for hydro topology in alternate platforms like phonons photoelectric circuits uh, photons etc we did then discuss uh, models of bosonic hydro topology in quantum spin systems like magnons and in particular we showed how we can form how we can get a new type of hydro topological phase in quantum parametrics and we have shown key attributes of hydro topology to hold in this quantum uh, parameters, which are protected corner modes, which we have defined as hot trip lawns. And uh, this corner mode we also showed are shared by the edge theories. And uh, we also showed the edge theories, at least I motivated that the edge theories manifest higher order topology. Sorry, first order topology. And finally, we have constructed the invariants for our models and labeled the various phases using those. So that's it. So I'm almost done. I'm, I should actually kind of acknowledge my collaborators here. So this whatever was mentioned here appears in this talk in great detail in this uh, uh, in this paper in great detail. And this was done in collaboration with a professor from a company at U of T and one of his really bright students who is about to actually get a doctorate now, uh, Jeremiah McLeary. And I should like acknowledge the following funding agencies. So NSERC, uh, you know, both uh, Arun and I uh, were supported by NSERC and all the computation was done thanks to Compute Canada uh, resources. And Jeremiah was supported by uh, you know, I am not able to pronounce his name, but one of the um, scholarships from Montreal and Quebec. Right. Yeah, so I think I'm done. Thank you for listening. So thanks, Sarijit, yeah. for telling us about all this hot stuff.
So uh, the talk is now open for questions. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for an interesting talk. So, maybe I, yeah, perhaps I didn't quite follow, but uh, I, I thought I put basic idea, but still I'm confused because uh, so you are discussing the higher order topology in the spin system in terms, terms of trigons. But yes. uh, if we, I consider a simple J1, J2 chain mm -hmm. that has quantum spin version of uh, SSS model. Yes. Then, if I uh, cut the system on the at the strong bond, yes. then I have an edge state. Yes. But this edge state is uh, uh, double. This edge state is should be double. Just a spin one half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not triple. So is it different? No, 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 no. This is well, what are you talking? Is different from this one? Or yes, yes, it's different. different. So the, the, the thing that you're talking about is called the ground state. Okay. These yeah. are excited, excitation. Uh -huh. So if you have excited, so, so so my ground state of this model that I just discussed is very yeah. trivial. They don't show any topology. Uh -huh. They are simply product states of things. Yeah. But the excited manifold, that is where the topology okay. is. So the one that you just gave example is that of a ground state. Okay. So, so that so, kind of models are also there. Okay. okay. So you, you are talking about a different state. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, very nice talk. I have a couple of questions. Yes. So for 1D SSH model, yes. will the topological properties remain intact if you consider second or higher order hopping? Yes and no. Depends how you do it. There are so if for 1D SSH model, right? If you can introduce the next nearest neighbor hopping in a certain way, you can preserve the topology. And you, in in that, you can also have there is a nice theory along you. You can even have protected boundary states. Even when the gap is closed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there is some non-trivial stuff there. Right. Okay. okay. So my next question is: So you said that for uh, anti-ferromagnetic configuration in BBS model, the time reversal symmetry is broken. Yeah. BBS one. So no, no, I was saying that. Okay. The time reversal symmetry broken thing is to motivate how you. So there are various types of phases that you can get in quantum spin system at the ground state. One of them is magnetically ordered or quantum magnets, the other is quantum paramagnet, which is not magnetically ordered. So one way to distinguish them using symmetry is to say that, is to say that the magnetically ordered one breaks time resource symmetry, whereas the magnetically unordered one doesn't break. That, the statement was meant only in that sense. So if it's also true for SSH modules, right? SSH. Sorry. Which is SSH? So are you talking? So go on, tell me. So one is SSH model, if you consider the uh, paramagnetic configuration. So is it also true for this? So when you are, so usually when we say SSH model, we mean for electrons, free electrons, no interaction. So there is no anti ferromagnet there. Okay. So for that is time reverse symmetry is not broken. But is there some spin version of SSH model you're talking about? Yes. yes. If you if you have anti ferromagnet there, you can consider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Will soon look proper yes, yes. So, yes. But when you have uh, a model on a uh, hexagonal lattice, mm -hmm. the below is not square. So, how do you construct? Well, so I guess you already probably have heard this statement. Mm -hmm. You can have multiple equivalent rulers. In fact, there is another statement that you can show. You can cut any, you can dissect any rulers and rearrange the portions of the dissected rulers into a square, always. So I can map any bibliosome of any shape into a square. Okay, then the procedure is set. Yeah, procedure is set. Thank you. Yeah. So you explained about the BBH model, where you have told about that one creep point through the MX uh, mirror strain that doesn't change the sign. So are you talking about the electron BBH model or the trip from BBH? Electron BBH. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I need to go up there. The home button is not working here, so I'll, I'll give me a while to go up there. Okay, then I have to touch the computer to that. Okay, it's just. Okay, so there's a problem. 
es una voz. Es un voz. Es una 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 voz. That is the symmetry operation. If you do that transformation, then only you can show your Hamiltonian, which are not written here for the DBS model, remains integral. It's easy to see. If it was just reflection, that is just one and three interchange, yes. this dashed line wouldn't be replicated here. You need to take care of this dashed line. It's not a simple, you can see already, it's not a simple reflection. Okay. You have to do more. So that more is changing the sign, basically changing the phase of the wave function on three to be. You know, five opposite to that of one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nice talk. Uh, so, in case of the uh, quantum paramagnet, mm -hmm. so there was this first model which had J1, J2 kind of coupling mm -hmm. for the singlet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the final phase diagram on stacking them, mm -hmm. that is independent of J2 because it had J1. No, no. So, it also, also, so, if when J1 is less than J2, you mm -hmm. will have these uh, modes on there. When J1 becomes greater than J2, you will lose more than that. Okay, so the phase diagram was in that particular condition in both X and Y direction. Like the final phase diagram of when there was so, so, Sorry, so in this, for this one, yeah. there is no other parameter. So, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, here, mm -hmm. so the only parameter that really matters is the ratio of J1. There is only one single parameter. Right. If that is less than one, you will have these modes like this. The moment that is greater than one, you, you will have this exact transpection without the mode. Okay, so like, it's a one different right? Right, and when they are stacked, it's always in the condition when J one x is greater than uh, less than J two. Oh, in the yeah, yeah. When you generate yeah, this, yeah, in that yeah. case, yeah. Okay. So it's a very informative talk. So my question was that uh, if you if you are when you are taking SSH model, mm -hmm. so in non-trivial case you are getting change in polarization is zero, and uh, sorry, in non-trivial Trivial case you are getting change in polarization zero and for trivial case you are getting one half. Yes, half in non trivial half, yeah. and zero. And so zero. One, if you take the second year is never hobbling, what will be the change in the polarization? Yeah, so again, so going back to what he was asking, right? When you take the second year is never hopping, it depends how you take it. Right? If you take it in a way that it closes the gap, you cannot define the polarization. But you can still have another invariant which you can define for the winding number. So winding number and polarization is not all the same. So you so design answer to your question is that when you have second year they were hopping and if the gap closes, you may not be able to define a polarization, but you still be able to define winding numbers. Okay, uh, if the gap is not closed, then, then there will be a change in the winding number and the, it will... Yeah, uh, but, but, but see, the winding number can be any integer, 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. Polarization can be only 2, 0 and half. They are related to each other by mod, mod 2. Yeah, so your polarization will multiply by with another integer number. Yes. So, 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 the, if you increase your winding number to two, you will have two more at the, at the edge. And then the polarization will become half plus half, which is one which is equal to zero again. So, another question was if I do this uh, trivial and non trivial case, then you will get the boundary. Yes. So, how this thing evolve in the hot case, I mean, the in higher order topological case, how this boundary, boundary thing will be evolved? So, so what do you mean by evolve? Is, I mean, so far, I have not addressed dynamics here. So, what is okay. the problem? I am saying that uh, in the boundary, in the domain wall case, you will get zero mode there mm -hmm. in the boundary wall. Mm -hmm. So, I am saying that in the hot case, mm -hmm. this uh, zero mode will be uh, stacking there or it will go on. So, in the hot case, you have to have intersection of boundary to get the zero mode. One boundary is nothing. Okay. You have to have intersection that at the intersection of these two boundaries, you will see the local X. So another question was when you are taking the in the phononic case, mm -hmm. there uh, you are getting change in the thermal properties or all these things. I mean the uh, well, corresponding I, I to corresponding yeah, to this. Will, but I don't in that paper that he showed you may not have I don't remember the paper really well, but they may not have used the thermal properties to see how yes, what the what are the uh, physical property change yeah, corresponding yeah, so, to that. So okay, so that's why these uh, classical versions. Are gaining, gaining a bit more popular it is because in these classical versions they are so big you can directly go and measure at the corners so you can have a direct evidence of the corner you don't need to do a thermal property there. so in that what, what will be the measurement i mean the measurement of, <laughs> measurement, measurement of this corner thing yeah so depends on the platform right for for one you just go and you know maybe which picks up some mechanical vibration 
since the mechanical vibration is large there, and as you go inside, it will exponentially, the amplitude of the vibration will exponentially decrease. Basically, these are just normal modes of this mechanical system, which are you know, staying at the point. So as you go inside, it will decay. So it is practical version of the fire topological analog. This is the advantage. You can directly probe the corner. You don't need any other uh, properties to this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your very nice talk. No problem. So uh, my question is, where you have defined some one-year functions. Yes. You have defined a quantity capital A function of yes. k. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the very curvature, very fixed language is equally valid in these cases for higher. It's equally valid, but so here you can show that the very curvature is okay. Nice. So this model that I showed you doesn't uh, make time with the symmetry. Okay. My question is, if very phase, very curvature language. So, so when you say very phase, you mean the very phase as the sum of all very curvature values. So that is zero in this model. Because you don't break time of symmetry. But yes, that's not in problem. But okay. this if is like your very potential. Yes, yes, you're right. But now for for first order topological instrumentor, okay. the band gap should bulk band gap should close. Uh, for for, for the transition to happen. Yes. Right? Yes. But you have told that for higher order topological yes. insulator, the band gap need not close. It can close, but need not close. But then what, what is the non adiabatic path then? So that's the thing. So 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 th so that's the point. So here you cannot use those ideas of conventional topology. So here for higher order there are paths without band gap closing, you can reach to different higher order topology. What will change is that invariant I construct. So instead of band gap, make it the invariant. The invariant cannot change radially. Okay. Another uh, intuitive way to see this is that if you only keep seeing the edge theory, which is in this this model is first order topology, the gap over there will close. Okay, but not the bulk. It may close, but not necessarily. Another question is you have started from a six model. Yes. So, so is there any analog of something called Holden model where or Kane Miller model where speed? Yes. Of so there is another invariant that you can define, which is the analog of this Z two kind of thing. That okay. is very close to realistic materials. I yes, think. yes, yes. So there is a paper, but I, 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 you know, I, I don't remember the exact ideas. But the idea was there. So here, like we generalize the idea of polarization as the invariant. There they went to hot hydrotopological by generalizing the invariant to this in model. There is that idea. Yes, nice. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, first let me know. Are they heavy? Yes, yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Somebody can respond transcribe this in this form. So I'm guessing this is this is in the first diagram. Why when, when I was discussing the electron. So when T1, yeah, thanks. So okay, the diagram also looks exactly the same. When T1 equal to T2, this gap will not be there, and a one will have a one continuous. And I hope I answered last week's question. So, is there any kind of uh, phase transition associated with this fact? With, with, with what fact? With this gap closing when T1 equal to T2? Yes, is, is there any kind of phase transition happens here? Yes, the polarization will vanish. The polarization will vanish. Okay. There are no other questions. Let's thank uh, Arjit for having a good We now break for lunch and meet again at 2. Yes. Oh, yeah.